Okie dokie, so this is our yoga session together. We are gonna get comfortable, we're gonna get um, extra layers should we need it. We can have a blanket, we can have extra layers on our body. Uh, we can have a cushion, we can have a bolster, or you can have cushions positioned in additional places. So there is an option should you want to, to kind of layer yourself up. So if you want to come to lying down, to get my mat in the, in the position, so coming to lying down, when we're lying down, you might like a cushion behind you, behind your head. You could also pop a cushion underneath your glutes, around your hips. You could open your knees out and you could pop cushions underneath your legs, or you could have them where, like a bolster, you put the cushion underneath your knees and let yourself flop. So wherever you are, I'm gonna do the same as you. I'm gonna get comfortable. I'm just going to have the soles of the feet together because it is one of those ones that this reclining band of is a soft way to open through your inner thighs, open through the pelvis and start to breathe into your belly for me. Wherever you are though, wherever you've settled down with this first position of your body, perhaps you can have your arms out for me. So you can have the elbows soft on the mat or on the floor, backs of the hands are on the floor, and I've just got a softness through my hands. And if you're okay to keep the legs where you are, please do. If you want to wiggle around or you want to extend out, I would just let those legs flop their way out from my hips. You could have a little stretch and a wiggle should you want to through the ankles. Otherwise, just coming to rest and settle in a position that makes sense for you. So you're going to stay there in that comfortable position with our comfortable breathing. So comfortable breathing is just our natural breathing, your natural breath cycle, the natural inhale to that natural exhale. Playing around with it as we get more confident, but for right now, leave it as is, let it just flow through the body and let yourself just be guided by how you're feeling right here, right now in this moment. So being able to find more of the calm from the inhale and finding more of the calm from the exhale, letting your head, especially if you've got a cushion, let it be heavy in the cushion. Let the shoulder blades draw down your back and just being able to let go. Let go with the mind-body connection to allow yourself to have a fuller version of this breath. And the fuller version could simply just mean embracing what's coming your way. So embracing the inhale, embracing the exhale, playing around with the idea of the mind-body connection. So where is that breath in your body? Can you tune into it? Can you breathe wherever it ends up? Could you breathe a little deeper? Do you want to focus on the inhale a little bit more and find that sense of rise? Find that sense of drawing in and up towards the chest and beyond. Do you want to focus on the exhale? So there's always a little play around with how you're actually feeling and see whether you can influence that breath a little bit more. I would say you can start to influence it more just by being present with the breath. And so that comes from us being able to clear through your mind, relax through the head as a whole. So relax through the forehead relax through the temples, relax through the cheeks and the jawline. And that in turn can again talk to the back of my neck and my head, releasing, letting it be a little heavier. That too can walk its way down with my mind's eye to your shoulders. So you'll go across and around the body and wrap around. So start the idea of using that breath, just like a massage therapist would, to kind of press and push and release your body. So in your mind's eye, you're giving yourself a very calm, slow walk through the body, a little mini body scan, as it were. So creating the time for you to be present in each and every portion of the body takes some concentration. It takes some control. So we're controlling the breathing to control that movement of the breath through the body. And then in turn, we're helping the body. We're helping the body to unwind. We're helping the body to have and create that version of calm. So being present, we're gonna think about some movement, we're gonna think about some stretch, 
lifts and release, and then our poses in general will start coming your way. I'm going to come back and join you down on my mat, but I'm just going to put my feet into, let me just shift my mat around, sorry. I'm going to put my feet into that planted position. So both heels are down, both feet are flat. And then from here, I'm going to take, so I'll have a calm, um, not necessarily engaging through my core yet. I have a calmness through the lower back, a calmness through the core, and a very carefully and controlled with an arm circle. If you actually want to get through some wrist mobilization and actually have your hands up there wiggling through the fingers and the thumbs, you can bring yourself in and out. And then you can open and sweep just across the body, so opening the chest with a little flick of the wrist. So you are again mobilizing through the wrist and those fingers. And then as I come and take the arms up, Try not to flare up and release my lower back. I'm going to start to use the core to keep my back there and about. It's not glued, but it's much closer than it was a moment ago to my mat. I've only been going in one direction, so I'm going to take those arm circles back the other way. So you might actually do one big circle one way, one big circle the other. And then what I'm going to suggest is maybe leaving the arms slightly higher than usual. So a moment ago, in your relaxation, in your Shavasana, you had them down. Could you lift them up a little bit or even make a U-shape with your arms? From this U-shape, can you slide along your mat or it might be along the floor and just draw down and then continue that sweep? So I'm going to lift up, open to kind of a stronger version of that upper range of the circle and then bring that into a chest stretch by bending the elbows bringing that u shape but then the elbows come to the side of my waist and i go back up and around what i'm just going to suggest as well is we leave those arms above the head slowly bring them down put the back of the hands onto the mat and then go back to those Bandhakanasana legs. So I'm just gonna close the eyes and slide those hands. So I'm gonna have fingertips touching above my head. I'm very lightly floating my arms along my mat and I'm just doing little mini sort of crunch movements. I'm just coming up above the head and just pulling down. And then I'm just gonna flop out and relax those arms down. And just breathe again through your inner thighs, through your pelvic area. You have a little bit of core hold, a little bit of residual engagement. And we're breathing in and breathing out. What we're going to do from here is we're going to take, so I'm going to go to my right hand side. My right hand, my palm is up. I'm going to roll over, have the knees connect, connect the hands, lift up. Come back where you started, which is your Bandha Kanasana. And then if you're able to, go over to the other side, close the hands, close the knees, come through the midline. And then I am back over on my right hand side. I then lift my top arm, my left arm, I lift my left leg. I pause on my back. And I breathe out to close again on that other side. Depending on how wide you want to make these arms, you could stretch them a little bit straighter, a little bit fuller in terms of stretch and release, or soften the elbows and have a little bit more calm for that stretch through the chest and the shoulders. Just settle on your back again for me. This time, just bring one knee, bring the other, and we're coming into your Apanasana. So I might just wiggle out through the ankles whilst I'm here. I might also just tuck up, and you can hold the flexed feet or the pointed toes. You can hold, hold down lower on the ankles if you want to. And I just naturally put that little rock in for myself. You do not have to. And if you'd like to, Keep that very tight tuck. So like I said, you can hold up at the knees anywhere along the shins or hold lower down towards the ankles and have much more of a hug position where my shoulders get a stretch, where I've got some more upper body release. 
And then same is true. I'm just going to release and wiggle the ankles. Have a little floating and a little straightening version where it's, it's just a free option here for a hamstring stretch. But I'm just going to hold the other knee or shin. And for me, this option is quite natural to put a straightness and a pointed toe into this. But if you like the flexed foot, you could give me a bit of point and flex here and wiggle. And I'm just going to finish on this one, this second side here. And then I'm just going to rock myself over just nice and slowly. Being present here, coming back and allowing myself to have the all fours position. In this all fours position, I'm just gonna have parallel legs and parallel arms. I'm gonna step the hands out in front. I'm gonna drop back and do a parallel option for your child's pose. When you come through and up, if you're able to, let's gently come down onto the elbows, lifting, rising, and gently does it for leaning. When I say leaning, it isn't a drop. It's a nice purposeful movement into your cobra. But because you're coming at it from the mat and rising up and rising out from the elbows, there's a little bit extra pause. You've got a little more time to get your core involved. Breathing in, breathing out. If you are able to stretch from your pelvis to your chin and lift your head, lift out through the crown of the head a little bit stronger as you get more familiar, then let's do that. If you would like to put a little extra hold into this, then why not do that as well? What I'm going to suggest is we're going to have this flow and we're going to add and add our poses to it. So we've got a nice little vinyasa coming your way. But at the moment, because you're staying down on the mat with the knees connected, the hands connected, you're feeling quite calm with it. So hopefully you are ready to put a little bit more core engagement in for me. And we're going to come into our downward facing dog. I'm just going to finish this cobra first. And then I'm just going to reposition just to mention but if you had your hands a little softer, this is a time to make that hand span strong. So the fingers from the thumb, the middle finger facing right up, right out, and you're just planting those hands for me. Breathing in, tucking the toes, and on the exhale, where are you with a down dog right now? Would you like a walking version? But the walking version helps to ease, but really does get going with a calf stretch. So it eases on one side, and you have a lot of power and a lot of push press if you can do it on that opposite side. When you're ready, or if you're ready, we can try ourselves at a double option, which might need a little bit of adjustment. So take your time to have that. If you keep looking up, be careful that your neck is not compressed and maybe you can look down the touch and you can look down to your toes down to the back of your mat and you just hold here for me with your core. What I'm gonna suggest is just a gentle tip forward, soft onto the knees, open those knees, big toes together, and then give me some pause and some release just to kind of shake it out a little bit. So the child's pose legs is a nice place to pause with a shoulder roll and then just having some arch and some release like we did on the mat but you're up here now with your spine and the upper back free from the mat. And then here, just a little extra lift up. I haven't arched my back too much, but I'm stretching from the pelvis to the chest to the chin onward and upward, and just lifting out. As you come through, you might gently, it's not so much drop, but tuck the chin into your chest and just hold yourself there stretching the upper back and the portion of the neck for me. And then we've got a little flow. I'm just gonna change my mat position, give you a second, a breather. And then we're going to have the flow that we've done the down dog together, we've done the child's pose and we've done the cobra. Are we able to put some more in and maybe do upward facing dog, put a plank position in, and then just gently does it, play around, with where you would like to be. I'll talk you through all the different options, 
I'll be doing it with you. You listen out for what makes sense or you already know. You already know where you'd like to be with this. So I'm gonna plant those hands again. I've got the lovely strong stance with my heel of my hand pressing into my mat. Parallel arms, parallel legs. Tuck your toes for me, we're ready to go. On that exhale, it might again not be your perfect pushback. Don't worry at all, just go with the flow. Press on into those heels. When you give me a plank, it might be you're fine where you are. It might be you give me a step, step forward and a little drop. You might even have to do both. You might have to step back and step forward and then you give me that strong start. Let's hold if you can and breathe through it. So you're holding with the wrist, elbows, shoulders in line. You're holding with that push press out through the upper back. You're holding with the core, the thighs, the glutes. And here is when we'll pause, softly touch down on the knees, untuck the toes, leave the hands where they are, Give me that lovely stretch back. I'm going to drop onto my elbows, try to keep them in that parallel stance. And then here you go with a calm, slow lift up to a supported cobra. Are you able to just bypass your child's pose for a moment and give me another down dog? Then you could give me a plank. Why not slip in an upward facing dog, turning onto the top of your feet? Lift the chin as well, should you want to. You're right there for me. Touch down on the knees. Here, you can give me another child's pose. This time I've gone wider. So if you'd like to slide the hands in, pop the head down, you can do, and put in an extra little pause here for me. If that doesn't seem good, then you could just carry on flowing. I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna come up from that child's pose. I'm going to plant again with the parallel of everything, arms, legs, tuck my toes, strong stance with my core. I'm going to go straight into a plank. Then I'm going to push up to the down dog, which for me, I'm just going to move my feet and go a little wider and just breathe in and breathe out where I am. If you want to cycle through those legs again and stretch those calves, you can. I'm going to take the step, step forward, and then I'm going to slide in so that I'm stacked again, wrist, elbows, shoulders in line. If you like it, you could bring the feet in and give me a different option for a zipped up full plank. Here, I'm going to pop down on the knees, and I'm just going to release back where I am. So it's a tight position instead of a wide position for my, co um, for my child's pose. From here, I'm just going to lift up and I'm actually gonna walk us down. So I'm gonna walk down on my elbows, gently wiggle out through our tummy, maybe even come down and just have an extra little pause where the head is down. And then I'm gonna go into our U shape. So if you would prefer, we did this lying on our back. You could give me some sphinx here. Gently does it though, breathe in. Breathe out. If there is the possibility of a stronger, thigh, glute, and core engagement here, you may find, and there might be too much pressure through the pelvis, but you might find your actual torso and your tummy button comes away from the mat. Not as easy to show for you with a, this big jumper of mine on, but I'm lifting and hovering. And if you'd like to hover the legs, pop that into as well. So breathe in, add your layers. It could be one leg rising as I lift my chest. Then I would need to match on the other side, but then I could try a double. The double might be too much pressure again, like I mentioned, on the pelvis. So the single leg option is not necessarily a modification, but it could well be a necessity for you to have a calmer version of a strong pose. So I'm going to do one more each side of that single leg lift. And then here, bring your hands in, lift up, and then lift up to wide again. I'm just gonna turn your way. Let's have those child's pose legs and then roll for a lovely big shoulder roll. Maybe we'll do three of those. When we stay back, we're gently going to lean and stretch. So I'm gonna pop my hand, it's sort of behind where my ankle is, and I'm gonna have a lean back version of a side bend, but it's really nice and slow. I'm just challenging the idea of arching over the top 
and avoiding compression of the spine, but I'm lifting, reaching, stretching, and then I'll gently nudge myself over. Then I'm just going to do a classic side bend where I just lean further. So my hand is in line with the hip and I might lean further over into more of a classic arch position. So breathing out, I've actually got my elbow in sort of the crook of my hip as well. One more of those, reaching. And then I need to match that because it was actually one more each side. Perfect. And then from here, again, let's the shake out or wiggle of thumbs and fingertips because we've had quite a few of the down dog. Now we're going to see if we can put in a cobra that comes from the floor so you can rise from your mat, but you can also come back in that opposite way, which was my calmer version. And then we're going to flow in and out. And what we're actually going to add is the roll up and the upper back extension. So I'm just going to take my jumper off so that I've got a bit more freedom as I move through this. So when you're ready for me, let's go back to your all fours position. In your all fours position, when you're ready for it, it's the strong stance. Let's make that your heel of the hands again, make that stance strong, tuck toes, breathe in, up we go. Press into my heels. This is your downward facing dog for a pause. So if you're able to, Let's pause, breathing in. I mentioned it earlier. Are you able to do a little bit more of that triangle shape, a little bit more bottom in the air? And let's look on down and see how you feel about looking towards your feet. Now I'm going to go there. So I'm going to walk up towards my hands, sorry, hands towards my toes. If you can stay through the standing forward bend as you rise up, soften the knees towards the end, Tuck your tailbone under, use our core and whatever version, straight or V-shaped arms for an extended version of your mountain pose. And then I'm gonna do a very soft float down. I'm just gonna stand here, because this is the first time we've been standing. Let's stand in your mountain pose. With the core engagement from the pelvis to the rib cage, to the lovely stacked shoulders and slightly soft knees. Palms out or down by the side, whatever you feel. I'm just gonna put myself here with closed eyes. So what I'm doing, I'm actually wiggling around through my feet. I'm finding a deeper connection through my big toe and wherever I can find it, because it's not absolutely every single toe, but my little toe and my big toe. And all I'm doing is I'm kind of dragging my toes into the floor and you're doing a little movement through the arch of your feet. So I'm just grounding myself, familiarizing myself, and then you may or may not have a stronger hold on this pose. You might actually have residual core engagement, glute engagement, and so it might feel that you've got a stronger lower body connection, and there might be the touch of a gentle sway. But you're again still there with the core engagement, the relaxed posture, the relaxed arms, breathing in, and breathing out and then letting yourself open the eyes slowly if you have them closed from here just check your positioning i left mine where i was so i'm in that parallel ish <laughs> for the legs zip up through the thighs let's have a hinge together i'm just going to put hands on hips and i'm going to look out in front and just sit back into a nice flat back version of our standing forward bend. If you want arms down, or you want your head and chest to come down, please do. Sit into these heels, sit into the calf stretch, the hamstring stretch, and then I'm gonna tuck the chin, then I'm gonna release the arms, and then if you want to, soften the knees and give me rag doll arms. So you're just letting those arms be lovely and heavy, hanging there where you are, breathing in, and breathe it out for me. When you're ready to come down to the mat, I'm gonna straighten the legs, press into the heels, and I walk through that flat back version of standing forward bend, through down dog. If you'd like to hold, let's hold again. Looking down at the toes, looking down at the heels, relaxing or gently just shaking it out through the neck. And then let's walk it, if that's your way to get there into your full plank. I'm gonna pop my legs together, do my zipped up option. 
Breathing in, breathing out. From here, are you able to give me up the facing dog and give me it with the zipped up legs for a change? Strong core, strong shoulders, strong for the thighs. Soft on the knees. When you're ready for it, I'm just gonna open mine, bring my big toes together. And I'm actually gonna match that with a nice V shape. And actually I'm gonna turn my thumbs up, turn my palms up. Breathing in, breathing out into your child's pose. From here, just lift yourself back to your parallel. I do think it, it is helpful to have a parallel. I just need myself to have a step, step forward of the hands to glide into our supported cobra. Are you feeling a little bit more supple through your head, neck and shoulders? Could you give me some mobilization, some movement here? And then are you able to have the push back of the parallel? So a lovely deep child's pose again with those parallel arms. Do you need them out just a touch? So as wide as your mat potentially, go down on the elbows, lift up because here, cobra back again, but can you come to the floor for me? So I'm gonna see, I'm just gonna move back for the sake of the camera. But from this cobra, soften the elbows, let them hug the side of the body. You may need to bring the hands back a bit. You may need to roll the shoulders. You may need to lengthen out through the legs. And now you're giving me cobra from the floor into the parallel child's pose again, into, which is Chaturanga Dandasana or a little mini version when you get the elbows down on the mat. Then you lift up. Could you come down into cobra? So now you've got cobra with a little vinyasa going in one direction and coming back the other. So lifting, and you don't have to hold that first version if you don't want to. You don't even have to push all the way back. You can go back to angry cat instead of child's pose. Lift the chin if it's there again. Soften, ease your tummy down on the mat. Breathe in, let's straighten out those legs. Are you ready for a hold with me? Breathing in. Breathing out. Is it a half version? Is it a full version? How are you feeling? Lifting with the neck, you don't have to, or the head, or actually giving me a head down option. As you walk up, let's now change our mind about how we're going to stretch and release and pop our cat cow nicely in here. Because you're not lifting or coming up and down, if you'd like to, you can make fists with your hands. And here, it could be a little mini. It could just be your tuck and release for your tailbone tucking under. My lower abdominal is getting a little bit of action. They need to activate to help me round the back. Have you done enough of the look up portion because you did it in your cobra? So do you not want to do as deep here? But again, you're always playing around with what suits you. I'm just going to go back to flat hands for myself. And then I'm going to round through and maybe look down towards my pelvis or even through like we did on down dog to get my chin in a little bit and get a bit more C curve. From here, I'm just gonna suggest we do a nice wiggling version. So I'm doing a kind of undulating push press through the shoulders on their own, or I know everything's connected, but just the hips alone. So that is one way and that is the other. And there's a little bit of everything going on here. You could have the strong diagonal. So push over on the right shoulder and see if you can push over to the left hip and just get everything going here. If you'd also like it as a slightly elevated wider stance, get those hands in front of you, come through the cobra, which is your elevated version, not the one that came from the mat. And then you push right back. This turns into a bit of a figure of eight. It turns into a circular motion. And in a moment, we're going to go and try a locust pose. So just manipulating ourselves, managing expectations for what our body is capable of, listening to it to give it the stretch, give it the release it needs. And this is just a beautiful flowing movement. If it has been too much on your knees, Please do just pop something underneath or roll your mat up because I know you've been here for a little while. But as you come back into that central and that neutral, we're going down again. Just gonna walk into the middle, walk down onto my elbows, walk down onto my tummy, and you can do this in different ways. So if you like to cross the arms in front and maybe pop the head to the side, 
you can actually give me that straight leg lift that we did. So we did this already with our um, cobra, sorry, with our sphinx pose. You can have the same version, but as in repeat yourself or slightly change the arm. So I've got my, my crossed over arm. You can keep your gaze down and you can give me a slightly stronger stance for glute, thigh, core engagement, holding element of a single leg lift. Would you like to have a kind of a froggy position or a first position where your heels are together and then you lift and you can actually point the toes? You don't actually have to lift by much. If you are able to feel that there's a slither of space between your thighs, more so down with an knee bar and the mat, then you know you've come up a little bit. It really is entirely up to you. Are you able and you want to keep the elbows, keep the hands down, but give me a little lift like I mentioned earlier through the chest and the torso. So breathe in to prepare on the exhale, double leg lift and hold. This is a more supportive version of our locust pose because locust classic would have your hands behind. So I'm gonna go there after this repetition, if you don't want to, don't worry, you repeat, single or double. I would pop my head down, maybe just wiggle it out for a moment. Just shake it out, breathe in, breathe out. If you would like it, you can interlace the hands, keep the legs down, keep the gaze down, breathe in, upper back extension, and you're giving me lotus arms, lotus upper body, but much more control potentially. And keeping your legs down is more of a grounding option. But if you're there for me, why not gently hover? I'm hovering with the parallel legs. That again might help to feel like you're more in control of this pose. I'm doing a single up, single down. Do you want to give me some hold? When you're up there, do you want to bring the feet in together? Would you actually like them zipped up in the first place? instead of just bringing the heels together. Are you able to hold for me? Where are you with this pose? Single or double, upper body, lower body, holding or coming in and coming out. And then I'm gently gonna release and we're gonna lift up and we're just gonna play around with gently coming in and coming out. So you can repeat where we've been, which is gliding forward, gliding back, Parallel child's pose, parallel slide forward into cobra, or we can have a little bit of hip opener, which brings a lot in through the body. So I might plant my hands, plant my foot, slide forward, slide it back. Where would you like to be with this? Do you want to travel in and travel out? Do you want to hold? Would you like to swap a little sooner onto the other side, plant the foot, let yourself come in and let yourself come out. So there's plenty of different options because I know you've been on the knees for quite a bit, just by having one leg front and these all three points in connection, that might be a nice little addition. I'm just gonna go back to the first side. So that was my right leg in front. And then again, you might need to roll the mat up for that back knee. I'm just gonna bring the torso. So I just want us to open the chest. From here, we're gonna do those same arms. Not too deep, we don't have to go throwing ourselves into over arching, but you can hold your wrist or you can interlace your hands. And then here, we're just gonna gently lean forward. All I'm doing is bringing my hands to my bottom to calm the shoulder and the chest stretching and then pulling out as I come forward. Breathe in, breathe it out. Last one. And here, are you able to step up and do the same thing, but high up? So tuck the back toe, step into a nice split stance lunge. And then let's go down into a little mini lunge. I've got the right foot still in front. I'm just gonna sweep my left arm over the top. If you wanna keep going up high, if you wanna put that back heel down, I'm just gonna wrap, release tuck, release. So from here, all I'm gonna do is do hands on hips step together. From this step together, you're, if you're with me, you're gonna step back and just do the other side and then we'll go down again. So I'm gonna step back. I could have a heel down option and have a lovely sweep. So that's actually quite a nice one for your hip flexor. If you wanted to repeat that on the first side and you didn't do it. 
absolutely you can. And then all I'm gonna do is just bend that back knee. Gently does it drop into it. Again, quite strong on hip flexor. Tummy's engaged. Wrapping is what I'm after, but you can give me another side bend. I'm going towards the front knee. And then we're gonna step in. If you can hinge forward through an intense stretch, pop your hands down and then just bend to come down. And you should be on the other leg, untuck the toe. We're gonna have those same arms if you're okay with that. So again, roll up the mat, pop a cushion under for that back knee. Interlace the hands behind, lean in and lift up. This is inhale and exhale where you see fit. What do you think is best for you? Is your exertion hinging and you need a little bit more core engagement? Do you wanna pull back a little bit and do you want to soften in? So you wanna let yourself drop down and then only be pulled back up and out. I'm gonna do one more, any which way you like. And then here, plant the hands again for me, tuck the back toe and then here, just lift to step. Bring your feet in parallel and just come up and out. I'm just gonna step around, but we're just gonna come into, and it can be parallel or slightly tighter. So you can go wider, you can go narrow, you can go tighter, I don't mind. But we're just gonna breathe in and then just sweep down into a hugging version of your chair pose. So we're gonna get right down, lovely and low. I've actually decided upon a zipped up, let's just come to the side. I've decided on a zipped up position, and then when I hinge, have my core engaged. So I'm gonna breathe in and have a hugging or even just tap the toe of the fingertips down towards the toes. If you are able to put this in with a little bit of upper back extension, let's do it on the next one. Tuck the tailbone under and lean it back. Now I'm gonna sweep one more time. Low squat position, low chair position, low in my legs. Upper back stretching out. Last one. Let's go low. Let's come up and out. And then from here, we are going to come. So actually, I'm going to do, let's just do some little side bending whilst we're up here. And then we'll come back down into some relaxation. So again, feet together, feet parallel, feet wider. I'm going to go with the zip tuck, zipping up through my pelvis, reaching, pausing reaching. If you'd like to, you can always step to the side, reach, step together, do the same side. Then I'm going to step over. So I'm going to step over the opposite side, bring the hand down, zip up the legs and stretch. So I'm just going to do that one more time. So I've got two lots. So I'm going to step out. As I step out, I'm going to lean in. When I come back, I've got the same side, my left hand side having the stretch. Now I'm going to reach for the right hand side, and I'm repeating right hand side. Lovely, I'm just gonna to get to the back of my mat, wherever you'd like to be. If you do want to be at the front of your mat, roll down and come that way, you can. What I'm gonna suggest, we've been here before, but we are stepping again, wherever you'd like to be for these legs. I've got my parallel option. I'm gonna zip up from the pelvis. I'm gonna tuck the chin into the chest. We're gonna roll it down. We're gonna ease ourselves to hold. Let go with the head, let go with the shoulders, breathing in, breathing out. If you're ready for it, just walk it in for me, come down, soften on the knees, and then what's my option? Well, we were here already together. We could have, so I've swung round, sorry. I've swung round, planting my feet. Why don't we have a little up and up so when you get there? Maybe you've got a wider position, maybe you're there with the tuck tuck. Did you give me earlier a full tuck up where you held those ankles or did a rock? Maybe let's repeat it here now. Then when you're ready for it, it could be exactly the same options. The reclining band of Kanasana to give ourselves passive inner thigh stretch. If you do want to put your hands on your body, you could gently put it into the pelvis, into the nook of your where your pelvis meets your inner thighs or just pop your hands right out to the side. All of these options are valid. If you wanna bring cushions back in, please do. If you're ready to flop on out there with those legs, that could be a brilliant option. Whenever you're ready to settle into your final version, just come into that final version, breathe through your body for me, and we're here for our relaxation. 
I'm just putting my layers back on. If you need to come up and do the same thing and come back, then you absolutely can. I'm just gonna sit in a cross-legged position whilst I talk you through your relaxation. If you'd like to come in a seated position for a change, you could come to a seated position, have your eyes closed, chin could be lowered, or just finding a neutral position. So, are you ready for me? We're gonna to breathe together. So we're gonna inhale through the body. We're gonna exhale through the body. We're gonna let that inhale rise, and we're gonna let that exhale gently does it falling away. When you're letting it fall away, you're creating that idea of letting go. So the idea of releasing tension, releasing the muscles themselves and letting everything just fall away for me. So breathing in is that lovely lift, that lightness again through the body, but let's keep it potentially to the front of the body. On the exhale, let that exhale draw you down. How are you feeling? Are you feeling that your head is connected to that cushion or your mat? Are you able to draw down a little bit? If you're like me and you're sitting in a cross-legged position for a change, how are your shoulder blades feeling? Are you able to relax through the arms? All of this positioning and all of my mentioning and touching upon different muscle groups Really, it doesn't matter what position you are currently in. A Shavasana itself and the relaxation pose that we're putting ourselves in is just that. You are here to relax. You are here to have that calm. So we use the core. We went in and out of our poses with some power, with some strength from within. So let's have some lovely belly breathing where your rib cage and your pelvis and then the hip bones and all of that glorious wrapping around, side of the waist, front and back of the body, wherever you are connected through the tummy in your mind's eye, breathe a little fuller for me. So breathing in, breathing out, sense and go with the flow of that breath. Sense where it is, be present with the breath, lift that breath into the chest a little bit more. Press it out through the body a little bit more. Take your time for me. Give yourself the time and challenge yourself to clear our mind once more. So relaxing through the forehead, relaxing through the head itself. Let it be heavy, whether it's heavy on the rest of my spine because I'm seated or whether it's heavy on my cushion. Let yourself be drawn down the spine. Breathe into those beautiful Christmas tree muscles that run the length of our spine that start the idea of hugging and wrapping around you. So having a glorious warm breath, a warm glow, hugging you, breathing with you, finding that sense of flow and that sense of calm. And when you're ready for it, let's have a little bit more wiggle, a little bit more movement. It could be moving the head. So if you're already seated, you've got much more freedom with the upper body. If you're currently lying on your back, let's maybe have a full body stretch and come up and join me. I'm already here for you in our easy pose. You could sit in any other seated pose if you want a hybrid of something or you've got the cushions, you wanna bring them back in. And then I'm gonna go back to the idea of releasing these hands and wrists. So I've got my fingers interlaced and I'm just bringing them in bringing them out. So if you're not quite with it to have them together or feel like you're pulling too much, just have the freedom of the hands on their own. I'm just gonna put mine back together again. And here I get quite a good pull through my bicep. So be careful what that feels like for you. I'm just gonna do a lovely stretch behind and kind of bring that circular motion or swimming arms back in. Rise up and coming around. You can create a lotus flower with your hands. We can close palm uh, prayer position and you can open. You can bring that lotus back in. You can draw it to the heart center. You can breathe in, open, beautiful circular arms. You're receiving that breath. You're breathing in. You are powerfully receiving that breath back in again. Let that calm wash over the mind, wash over the body and pause here for me with your hands in prayer position or any other mudra that you feel is good. I'm just gonna overly relax those shoulders. 
I'm going to bring my face and my gaze down towards my hands. I'm going to close the eyes. I'm just going to pop my fingertips on my temple, on my forehead, wherever you feel is a good option. And as I lift up, one more soft circular motion. Hands come down and I say, Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope we appreciate our bodies. I hope we appreciate our breath. And I hope you've enjoyed that series of poses to stretch and release your body because I definitely did. And I hope to see you and have you here with me very, very soon. So thank you so much. And I will see you soon.